Hare Krishna. We continue the theme of the external manifestation of the Paramatma. Why is this an important topic? Because that is the beginning of the Guru Tattva. What is a Guru or who is a Guru? The original Guru is Krishna. Krishna enters every universe, every atom and every living being. Being in our heart, Krishna watches what we are doing and guides us in our spiritual quest depending on the level of our consciousness. And at the degree of sincerity, Krishna sends us this or that Guru. Today in our Iskon society, we are seeing all sorts of unhealthy phenomena. Most of the devotees' problems stem from a lack of knowledge on the topic of Guru Tattva, and this topic is not covered by many of the Iskon Gurus. There are only a few Gurus who know it well. The absence of this knowledge, as already mentioned, creates problems and incorrect perception of reality. What it looks like practically? The devotees put their faith in some persons, and then this person did not justify their herbs, and they lose faith in this guru, leave the society. They start to see the negative. You can often see the videos on social networks where distrust of devotees and Iskon gurus is openly expressed there. Iskon gurus are accused of many things, embezzlement of funds, violation of principles, and non-authoritative appointment to the role of guru, etc. And then the following picture emerges. Everything is very bad. There are no pure devotees in this movement. What the hell is going? Everything is gone. Everything was stolen. There are deceivers and scoundrels all around. Criticism of all is gone begins. There is a trip all around, and then those who were active members yesterday are leaving Iskon, who goes where, and someone become a Ritvix. So they generally have negative statistics, they only see the negative, and since some gurus have fallen, the Ritvix start blaming all the Iskon gurus indiscriminately. They spin various conspiracy theories or even accuse Prabhupada's disciples of having staged a coup after he left, and so on. The ranks of Ritviks are actively replenished by delusion devotees who have lost faith in the Iskon gurus, and this is happening all over the world. In fact, Ritvikism has taken on a frighteningly huge scale and it is like a cancerous tumor on the Iskon body and it is also have hidden currents inside it. Also, there are many Gurus who have proven their strict adherence to the Parampara for many years without any deviation. There are flawless Vaishnava in our movement. Unfortunately, the conditioned nature covers the eyes of the Ritviks and prevents them from seeing the real devotees in this movement. In this way, Ritviks try to worship Srila Prabhupada directly or even Prabhupada's Murti. This is not the method of our and other Vaishnava Sampradayas. It should be remembered that Ekalavya who worshipped the Murti of Drona then died at the hands of Krishna and dissolved in the impersonal Brahman. Therefore, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that this is not our method. The Ritviks, they are like their followers of Ekalavya, therefore they will share his fate. This is the fate of spiritual losers, for from the Vaishnava point of view, to get into the impersonal Brahman is a great misfortune. Ever since I left the Ritvik ideas in 2006, many Ritvik sects and movements have appeared. They have their own YouTube channels with thousands of subscribers around the world. I know this topic well, because I myself was once an active supporter of this idea, but by the grace of Krishna, who is in the heart, he sent me the right people. With the help of the Vaishnavas, I managed to get out of this rhythmic matrix and see everything in the right light. Many are leaving the movement and it all stems from a misunderstanding of the Guru Tattva. And this misunderstanding is not only among the Ritviks, but also among the majority of Iskon devotees who have Gurus. Many people think that if you accept a Guru, it is like you get on a train that will take you up to Krishna in one lifetime. This is a very simplified and naive idea, since reality has many conditions and nuances, the main of which is the theme of the Guru Tattva. 
Because if you don't understand what is Guru, you don't understand his position and function. You put your faith in some person, not understanding the real position of this person. And then the moment of truth happens, your ideas break down, disappointment, anger and sometimes rejection of this society comes. As already cited in the previous video, Iskon is governed by the body of the GBC, which gives permission to any devotees to become initiating gurus within ISKCON. Unfortunately, there is no such device that could assess the level of realization of a devotee and accurately determine whether he is an Yutama, Madhyama or Kanishtha. If there was such a detector, then the GBC would appoint Yutama for the role of Guru. There are indirect signs by which one can judge the Adhikara or qualification of the Guru. The GBC are trying to set the bar and test the candidate for the role of Guru, so as not to allow random people for this position. But since it is impossible to look into a person's heart and see his motives, it still happens so to speak, a system failure and sometimes not the most qualified people go to this role. And we have seen examples where gurus have fallen. Why this happens is stated in this quote. The spiritual master must never be carried away by an accumulation of wealth or large number of followers. A bona fide spiritual master will never become like that. But sometimes, if a spiritual master is not properly authorized and only on his own initiative becomes a spiritual master, he may be carried away by an accumulation of wealth and large numbers of disciples. He is not a very high grade of devotional service. If a person is carried away by such achievements, then his devotional service becomes slackened. One should therefore strictly adhere to the principles of disciplic succession. The following quote goes on to say, A neophyte Vaishnava or a Vaishnava situated on the intermediate platform can also accept disciples, but such disciples must be on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well toward the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance. Therefore, a disciple should be careful to accept an Yutama Adhikari as the spiritual master. That is, what happens is what is said in these quotes. So Kanishka or Madhyama becomes Guru. And what does it mean? This means that they are conditioned beings with their anarthas and desires. And sooner or later it will come out. And then the disciples of these unqualified gurus lose their faith, feel cheated and leave the movement. Prabhupada was very wise. He knew everything and painted everything that the devotees would face in the future. Because it was all in the past and it is all known. There is also a very dangerous myth that an imperfect guru will lead you to Krishna if he strictly follows the parampara. Here it is necessary to understand correctly. One who has not reached perfection in a good way is not a guru. He has not yet seen Krishna. Therefore, the verse from the Bhagavad Gita 434 is not about him. Such a guru is allowed to accept disciples from third class devotees and non devotees to give them an entry level to devotional service. The second class devotee accepts disciples from the section of third class devotees or non-devotees. And if we return to the analogy with the train that takes us up to Krishna, such a guru is an assistant driver, but not the driver himself. And the driver of the train is a guru of the first class. And the guru who has not reached perfection is not a fact that he himself will come to Krishna at the end of his life, not to mention his disciples. Strict adherence is good but it does not guarantee that he cannot stumble and go astray. Therefore, there is a risk of falling as Prabhupada warns us about. Surely only one who has freed himself from Maya illusion can strictly follow the parampara. The rest can only try to strictly follow. It can take many lifetimes. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada and Bhaktivinoda Thakura recommended that we take an Yutama Guru. Of course, we are told that if a guru falls, there is nothing to worry about. Just accept another guru. But again, 
the question arises, which guru to accept and how not to make a mistake this time? Why waste time, initiations, reinitiations and all of that? It should be understood that only a pure Yutama devotee can guarantee a 100% result in spiritual life and protection from disappointment. No conditioned living entity on the Kanishtva or Madhyama level can guarantee anything. Nor can the followers of the Ritviks, who are also conditioned beings, guarantee anything. The Ritvik camps are also full of problems, because the condition cannot lead the condition. And whatever you call it, Prabhupada's Iskon or Prabhupada's movement, the conditioned leaders of these movements anyway will pull the blanket over themselves and get enriched on their adepts in one form or another. And other problems will occur. A conditioned person is not recommended to become a guru because they are all they are subject to the four faults. Presently people are so fallen that they cannot distinguish between a liberated soul and a conditioned soul. A conditioned soul is hampered by four defects. He is sure to commit mistakes, he is sure to become illusion, he has a tendency to cheat others and his senses are imperfect. Consequently we have to take direction from liberated persons. All gurus on Kanishka or Madhyama level play only a supporting role, not a primary one. If you become delusioned with some guru, it does not mean that knowledge does not work and that Krishna is not telling the truth in the Bhagavad Gita. This means that you have no knowledge of Guru Tattva and you put faith in an unqualified person and mistook him for the one through whom Krishna himself speaks. And then you start to realize that it is not. And there is a crisis and disappointment. Srila Gorgavinda Swami Maharaj tell us that we should pray to Krishna in difficult situation or even cry for Krishna. And then Krishna will send us his representative Guru. Gorgavinda Maharaj says you cannot see a pure devotee or Guru. You are not qualified for this. You are not the one who sees. You are the one who is seen. What does it mean? You can pray and make Krishna see you and send you Guru. And when you choose a Guru not with your mind, but accept the Guru that Krishna sends you, then you will have a guarantee. And how do you know that it is that Guru? You will have no doubt that this is a Guru from Krishna. Krishna in your heart will tell you. And let's quote that quote again. It is not possible for a conditioned soul to directly meet Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But if one becomes a sensei devotee and seriously engages in devotional service, Lord Krishna sends an instructing spiritual master to show him favor and invoke his dormant propensity for serving the Supreme. That is, there is a condition to become a sensei devotee and seriously engage in devotional service, and your seriousness is judged by Krishna. When you become ready, Krishna appears as the spiritual master. It happens spontaneously. Something inside you gives you confidence that you have met the right person. There is one very important formula in our Vaishnava philosophy, which sounds like this. The Bhakti, Bhakta, Bhagavan do not belong to this material world. Bhakti means the business between Bhagavan and Bhakta, that is Bhakti. If there is no Bhagavan, then where is Bhakti? And where is Bhakta? If Bhagavan is zero, then where is Bhakti? Bhakti means the transaction between Bhagavan and Bhakta. And what? Is it possible to understand this quote just by reading books until a knowledgeable person tell you what it means? What does it mean? This means that all three are on the same level, on the transcendental. Bhakti is a devotional service. Bhakti is a devotee of Krishna or Guru. And Bhagavan is Krishna. How to understand this? If the Guru is not an Yutama, he does not fall under this formula, since he is not a devotee of Krishna, but is only a candidate to be a devotee. And such a Guru cannot lead to Krishna a priori. And there can be no transaction between Bhagavan and such a Guru. The quotation refers to Bhakti, Bhakta and Bhagavan which means pure unalloyed devotional service performed by pure devotee. It does not work otherwise. 
not a Bhakta cannot serve Bhagavan. Therefore, these nuances must be heard from the Guru because you cannot just read and understand everything in the books. Unfortunately, there are first class Gurus in ISKCON. I don't want to sow any rivalry or suspicion among ISKCON devotees as to which Guru to choose or not to choose. We are all one family of Prabhupada. There is no loss on this path. Any Guru can be chosen in Scone, but one must know the principle of Guru Tattva, that Gurus can be at different levels, and no one cancels the opportunity to accept a Shiksha Guru either. Thank you for watching. Sorry if I broke some of your ideas. Put likes, dislikes, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to write comments, even if they are symbolic. This all helps the network algorithms to promote the video. Hare Krishna!